Welcome everyone to the Power of Giving Teller Fundraiser. Today I'm interviewing the interviewer, Alex Mandosian. And Alex, it's just an absolute honor to have you on this call. I love that I'm here and I feel like the tables have turned and now you're in my seat. Yes, and it's a hot seat <laughs> from where I'm sitting. Well, you're giving, so it's a great seat. Oh, well, Alex, as you know, we've got an exciting process that we're going through at the moment. And we were talking about the power of giving and supporting the Africa Life Education Foundation in Zimbabwe, which is sponsoring children's education, HIV orphans in Zimbabwe. I would like you to share today what specific incident changed your life when someone gave to you. Well, I remember it like it was yesterday. And before the person gave to me, a year before, I was on a park bench in Los Angeles, California, in a park called uh, MacArthur Park. Now, it was in the summer times. I wish it were very cold and wintry and snowing, but it wasn't. It was quite comfortable. School was out, and I had lost everything financially, but I still had shelter and a place to stay, which was my mother's home in Pasadena, California, where she still lives. But the humiliation of it all and going back and living with her after I'd moved out eight years prior was much too much for me, so I decided to sleep on a park bench and have the park bench story. Well, fast forward about 14 months, and after having lived home with my mother, because after the park bench, I lived at home, I was getting uncomfortable. I wanted to shower, and you know, I was very fortunate. At least I had a home and shelter to live with and under. I visited a gentleman near my home who was to be my future employer. His name is Gary. And I walked into his office, and I knew a lot about electronic marketing. Any kind of marketing with a plug or a battery, I knew a lot about. Now, back then, infomercials, the Internet wasn't around in 1991. It was, but it wasn't for commercial purposes like it is today. And I was very good at direct mail, and I was a hack, like a couch potato marketer for infomercials, because I'd watch all of them, and I would write scripts just on my own, after I would transcribe what I'd recorded on my VHS recorder, because back then we had VHS, DVDs weren't even around. And so I remember walking into this gentleman's office, and I was asking for a job, and I had an idea that anything that would sell well on an infomercial could sell just as well on Home Shopping Network or QVC, which were TV stations, but they were destination stations. They were like online catalogs, or in this case, TV catalogs, where people would go and... They would just listen and watch, and all that would be sold was merchandise, and they were multi-billion dollar companies even back then. My idea in 1991 was if something sells well on cable TV or broadcast TV, it'll sell even better on Home Shopping Network or QVC. Now, everyone knows that these days, but back then it was not often done at all. And so that was my idea. He liked it. Gary did. And he asked me, so what's your financial situation? And I told him I was broke. And I told him I was in deep debt, which I was. I owed about $242,000 in my mother's house, which was the only asset that we had. That was up for foreclosure because that's how we got the SBC loan for the business that I lost my money on, which happened to be the frozen yogurt and bakery business, which is a great business, but you've got to know what you're doing, and I didn't. That was a few years before. So I'm in this situation where my mother's house, where I'm living, is in foreclosure. I'm taking my mother down with me, poor woman, and I'm standing in a huge office of Gary's, and I'm asking for a job. And he agrees to pay me, and at that time he said, I'll pay you a $28,000 a year salary, which to me, my heart sank. I couldn't believe I would make that much money because I went from zero or negative to 28000 He says, how are you doing right now? I said, honestly, horrible. The only money I have is just money to eat, and you know, my mother has a job, but... You know, we have the situation with the home, and I didn't expect anyone to dig me out of the hole. So he said, look, I'm not going to get you out of the hole for the foreclosure. I know how troubling that may be, but I'm going to give you $2,000. And the only criteria I have in giving this 2000 is you don't get to pay it back. You just keep it. And so I'm not used to this, and I'm wondering, what is he bribing me for? I'm wondering, what's the hidden agenda? And then he said that someone had done that for him, and he was in a similar situation as I, and he wanted to pass that on, that tradition of just giving unconditionally, in this case money, which 
money doesn't buy everything, but many times what it can't buy, we can't use in the material world. And so I needed money at that time. So that was the greatest gift I could have. So I accepted it in a very guilt-ridden way, but I accepted it as well because I wasn't as a good receiver back then as I am today. And it meant the world to me because it gave me confidence. I had a $2,000 check in my pocket, and I didn't cash it. I put it in the bank, and I just kind of left it there. And I never spent it. <laughs> my mother's house went out of foreclosure. We negotiated with the Small Business Administration, the SBA, and it was a very happy ending. Now, of course, I'm a multimillionaire many, many years later. But what was most impressive to me is he told me I didn't have to pay it back. And because I wasn't in debt, it was an act of giving, an unconditional giving. And I remember being in that room, and I felt a rush of adrenaline just with the words, here's $2,000, the only condition is you must not pay it back. He didn't say go on to do good things for others, or he didn't even say, he didn't even slap the condition on do it for someone else. Okay, now I have many, 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 many times since, but he didn't put that condition on it. So it was a gift, and it was an unencumbered gift. And in giving... He insinuated he was receiving, which I think he did. And I went on to make him a lot of money for the next two and a half years. So I felt I'd done my part. And that was the same agency that had the Thymaster and Tony Robbins' Personal Power 1 and 2 and all the Guthy Ranker infomercials, the Abdominizer, Roll of Magic, all the Ron Popeil products, Amazing Discoveries, which was infomercial company back then. I learned the electronic marketing business through Gary, and it all started with a $2,000 gift he never had to give to me, and he did. So I'll never forget that, and that specific incident has changed my life and has set a cause into motion, and I think that is the single biggest reason why I'm a giver as a marketer, not only with content, but with students and bringing on protégés and mentees and many times gifting courses for those who are beyond the means of paying for it. So it's always done unconditionally. In fact, the only condition I tell them is please, please keep this to yourself. The purpose is not for you to tell people about this generosity. The purpose is for you to consume all of it yourself so that you can get back on your feet and regain the level of self-respect that you had prior to coming into this situation. Because I didn't have as much self-respect when I walked into that room. But somehow the $2,000 check artificially gave me the confidence, and I never spent it. Never forget that. I never spent it. So that was the incident. That's an amazing story, Alex. I guess I remember my grandmother used to say, you know, when you give to someone else, you're actually giving to yourself. And that's probably what this was all about. You probably got as much out of it as you did. Well, there's a testimonial from a dear friend and a student of mine, Laura Fenimore, and it's at the very bottom of teleseminarsecrets.com where it says, thank you, Alex. And most of them, the people at my reunion, they're just saying, thank you, Alex, thank you, Alex. There's background music, and it's nice. It's a heart-centered testimonial sequence. But Laura says, in giving, we receive. In giving, we receive. And I've heard that before, but never quite that way. I never saw it on video. So in taking that video, and she's on that page at teleseminarsecrets.com, at the very, 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 very bottom, you can't miss it. Just watch it. The whole thing is about two minutes and 30 seconds. She's in the middle. I remember that, and so now I say in giving we receive, and I feel like I'm receiving every time I do give, like I'm sure you do. It's an amazing feeling, yes, definitely. Okay, so if we look at the flip side of this, Alex, what specific incident changed your life when you gave to someone else? Well, there have been so many incidents that have changed my life, but I think the most meaningful giving for me was a continuity gift. Now, in marketing, continuity means every single month over and over and over again. <laughs> so I gave a continuity gift, and it was for my mother. Now, my mother doesn't live in poverty. She lives very well. She's a retired educator, and she lives in Pasadena. And it's not like she needs, she has a beautiful car. She has a nice home, and it will be my sister and my home when she no longer is with us and she passes on. And she has, you know, many years ahead of her. She's not even 70 at the time. But the gift I gave her that had the most meaning for her, believe it or not, are the two most important things for her. Her hair, you know, getting her hair done every week. She just <laughs> loves it, being pampered. And her nails. She gets her nails done every single week. So after I quote-unquote made it, which was...